Hello again, YouTubers. I'm with SpongeBob 101 back here again on the SpongeBob channel, and today we're having part number six of our seventh anniversary celebrations. Yay! So we're we're just past the halfway mark. We still got a couple more videos to go. So, and as you can read from the title, today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the all-new SpongeBob Comics Treasure Chest. Now, again, I'm sorry if you can't see the whole thing yet. I I'm gonna take the camera down and uh, show you guys give you guys a better look um so uh if you recall this is what we something we got in our mail day package uh earlier this month okay technically this video is going to be going live on december 1st so yeah you you want <laughs> you wouldn't see it um uh in november but i'm recording this one day before december 1st because you know i gotta record everything before i go on my big vacation so um, I'm just gonna give you guys a better look at this. This thing is rather heavy, so um, I'll get into the details later. We have a SpongeBob lock here. It includes bonus reprint of uh, SpongeBob Comics issue number one and more hidden treasures inside. So that's on the front, on the back, on the side. Sorry, Abram Comic Arts. Uh, just, just that. Sorry, I'm not showing you like zoomed out images of everything it's just a little bit hard to do that yeah this is a slide out case by the way um and on the back we have patrick which is actually pretty cool this is from the comics treasure chest <clears throat> excuse me on the bottom we have a sticker carrying this they may have made a printing mistake so that's why they had to go with this one. Focus. Okay, printed in China. Are you kidding me? And you couldn't print this in the United States? Seriously? Okay, this retails for twenty nine ninety five. So, um, pretty pricey. But uh, we'll see what's inside, and we'll determine the value from there. So, and we have our SpongeBob comic, uh, comic treasure chest right here. So, um, this thing actually slides out. To reveal so this is just the, the slip case here so nothing great about that although it's actually pretty great I gotta say <laughs> and inside we have uh, well something really cool I'll just show you guys this first um, let me get the camera down sorry I keep putting on the camera and putting it down but I have to do it to give you guys a better look look at this this front cover here Patrick in the dumpster Aside from the spine. At the back, we have uh, almost every single character, every main character. We got Squidward, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, Plankton's even here. The jellyfish and glasses, remember that? Probably also um, Gary, Larry, and Pearl are here too, so that's really, really cool. So, uh, where is that reprint issue? Oh, I think it's in the back. Okay, I'm not gonna spot it for a second. Open this thing up and let's see. Spongebob Comics Treasure Chest. So, that is everything that is included. Printed and bound in China. So, that's disappointing, but uh, you know, what are you gonna do, right? It's their decision. Contents Introduction by Stephen Hellenberg, Undersea Adventures. Now, um, this is everything that's included. Showdown at the Shady Shoals. And bonus pin of the gallery. That's really, really cool. I look forward to seeing what exactly that is. Painting of Spongebob Squarepants by Stephen Hilbert in 2011. And uh, we have an introduction by Stephen Hilbert himself. I'm actually going to take a seat here and give you guys a better look. Again, pause wherever you wish. Um, it's really like five minutes in. And so This is the cover art for issue number three. Undersea Adventures featuring the comic exploits of SpongeBob SquarePants and his aquatic friends. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, not to draw SpongeBob like a cheese. <laughs> this is not SpongeBob. The big cover up. Um, just heads up, this video is probably gonna take like 20 minutes because, I mean, look at how thick this is. So. Yeah, I just want to give you guys time to, you know, pause and read. So 
So yeah, basically SpongeBob forgot his pants. Dun dun dun. Since when is a kitchen door like that? And this page is stuck a little bit. <laughs> he, he drew a paper of him cooking. What? Whatever. Everybody's laughing at him because he has ripped pants. Ripped pants, man. Okay, so next time we have Dear Diary, staring Patrick and Squidward. Uh-huh. I got lost in my house today. <laughs> Help. I remember the little yellow book from season 8. It was a... Uh, well, it was uh, <laughs> kind of like a set. Sorry, not season 8, season 9. Star season nine. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they had to touch again on the topic of diaries. Sunburn. What? <laughs> the curse of the flying Dutchman. You his gross. SpongeBob instead, are you seriously curse lifted? Yay. And all it does all is transport. Wait, what? I'll prepare prepare for a wedding feast. I'll set course for Cape of for Cape of Cape Good Hope. 1,000 miles east. Are they referring to the real life Cape of Good Hope? Cause then that wouldn't really geographically be possibly 1,000 miles east if they were in the Pacific Ocean. You know, it wouldn't make much sense. So, oh well. <laughs> What's this? He loves the Krabby Patties. Curse back on. So they all become ghosts again. And they kick SpongeBob off. Mm -hmm. Oh, my color works too tight anyway. I shall destroy all the civilized planktons. Blue Danube waltz. I think I go faster in here because, well, it's already 10 minutes and I'm like not even halfway through. There are like, uh, how many pages? Oh, there are lots of pinups too. There are almost 200 pages, guys. I'm only at 35. So, yeah. Oh well. 35, 350,000 piece plankton set. <laughs> wow, I remember this from one of the animals. I believe it was the first animal, it was, it was a good one. Spongebob consumer pants in, the consumer is always right. Wrong. That's because they assume the customer, they are right about the customer, <laughs> not the consumer is always right. Big boss. Smart guy.
<laughs> the way I design them. They, it's more like you want it to be designed to be produced the way you designed it. Uh, oh well. This is really gonna take quite a bit of time, but uh, yeah, so anyways. Um, on a side note, <laughs> if you are interested in more Splinter comics, uh, we actually have a playlist. Oh, look at it, any way you want it. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. The back, that backfires on him. Down with tyranny. Anyways, yeah, so Grandma's Cookies. Okay, so I was, as I was saying, if you're interested in more Splinter comics, like we actually have a whole playlist of it. Featuring all of these comics. These comics have been all seen before. Okay, and uh, um, yeah, they're all in different videos. Of course, this is a compilation from uh, different comic issues and all that. So, if you're interested in seeing the full length comic issues, uh, yeah, we have a playlist for that. And uh, that'll be in the description box below or on the end screen. You can check out every single SpongeBob comic issue review. Uh, except for issue number three, which uh, in the previous Mario Comics video, I did mention that you know that is still missing, and I wanted to do it for the seven anniversary celebrations, but um, I don't really have time to go get it. So it's, uh, again, it's not directly with me right here, so you know, it takes a while. Just getting ice cream. <laughs> Spongebob Patrick getting ice cream, Gary getting ice cream. Okay, look at this. What lurks in the jelly hive by Bob Flynn. So there's like a game room, gym, all that great stuff. Even the king jelly. Queen jelly, sir. Legend of Novella Graphica. Coolest collection in town. Pant. Paint misbehaving. Pain, pain, pain. You can't do that. Uh -huh. My bit can look like a race car. My bathroom can have a beach team theme. Well, I mean, we gotta give it to Spongebob and Patrick. They are pretty good, like, decorators. If you remember from the episode Enchanted Tiki Dreams uh, Spongebob and Patrick essentially built an entire world <laughs> for Squidward uh, You know, the paradise of his the Tiki paradise With like the Squidward's Tiki Land song I actually thought that was a pretty good episode And that's one of my favorite episodes of season 7 So yeah, Spun Funnies here Plus some gentle ocean facts I'm just gonna give you guys a zoomed out look from now on because it's really taking quite a while. Don't lick the candy coral. Mixed bag of fun. <laughs> bikini bottom in Sandra in Bikini Bottom Wasteland. Uh, it's like in the latest episode, Scavenger Pants. When I bet you were like, Goodlands, one, 1,000 leagues, or something like that, and Batlands, 10,000 leagues. <laughs> oh, look at this, Spongebob in his bedroom with um, all his comics and Mermaid Man merchandise. What's that supposed to be? You know, like socks and water? That's just weird. Finny Foldover. Show down there, the shady shows. Okay, we're, we're almost there, guys. We're like, we're like this much in. <laughs> this much, okay. Show down at the shady shows. This was over issue 32 to 36, if I'm not wrong. Um, yeah, look at this. Tell for the ages. This is actually a pretty nice one, though. Show down at the shady shows part one is SpongeBob comic soggy cereal. 
I'm going to breeze through these again. Uh, check out issue 32 to 36 if you're interested in uh, the story, or you can just pause when you know I flip the page. Is this Italian speaking guy? Honestly, I don't even know whether he's speaking Italian. I assume he is, but it's not really Italian because they're saying Esperanto. They're speaking Esperanto. Um, and okay, I really don't know. I didn't. I didn't research on this. I apologize for that. But I don't think whatever they're saying here is real language stuff. Anyways, yeah, look at that giant squid. Hooked by Esperanto. With Virgo Riganto. I th I'm pretty. I, I still think they actually came out the language, so I, <laughs> that's uh, really hard to do, you know, to yeah, do all that. So they're battling friendship. Wow, friendship, okay. So, this mystery character here. Press four out of five. Uh -huh. Grip from the old foggy line. Tidal wave. <laughs> Oh no. Placing an ad in your dumb comic book was the long shot and then chances that the guys who ordered the sub would be visiting when ye I got delivered. What are the odds, right? Maybe it's that corner for leaving you up in that submarine for all these years. <laughs> okay, one dollar. Anyways, so yeah, the tidal wave. That guy's totally evil. You know, the thing about it is, you see, this thing is already open, the window's broken, so... Well... <laughs> it couldn't the tidal wave just flow out from there? You know, unless it's like a magical submarine that just prevents it from leaving it, unless the hatch is open. Okay, we're really almost at the end now, guys. Uh, I'm already quite tired of <laughs> flipping. Okay, we're all done, yay! So, okay. Who is the mysterious resident of Route 19? Uh, this guy is... Okay, this is actually continued, by the way. This this is not just a cliffhanger here. Um, this guy is actually Barnacle Boy's old... Okay, I'm spoiling for you guys now. So, cover your ears if you, if you don't want to hear it. But, uh, it was... He was Barnacle Boy was this guy's old sidekick. Ta-da! I said it, guys. I said it. I spoiled it for you if you didn't read it. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It's uh, in another five-part special. So, um, yeah. This guy. This guy had has a head and a, like a lock for a body. I'm spoiling for you even more now. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So bonus pinup gallery. Pinups by the saltiest artists. Uh, this side of the Mariana Trench. First up, paint up gallery. Oh, and that's pretty cool. I think this is like the coolest part here. All the covers. This is issue two's cover. Oh, we have Welcome to the Goo Lagoon. This is like jelly and plankton, you know, from Planet of the Jellyfish. Oh, there are black eyes. It's Jungle Bob and the Fishman's Revenge. I think this is from issue 20, because that's the only jungle issue that they had. The good. The Pat and the Squiddy. <laughs> Look at that, guys. United Plankton Studios. And the producer of Fistful of Dolphins and a few cent dollars more. That's a good one. Uh, we also have The Brave and Briny Krusty Krab Action. Look at that. And uh, King Neptune here, a SpongeBob in, in the Sponge Bunny's design. Oh wow, look at this. Jellyfish. It's one kind of jellyfish. And Patrick being sucked up by the jellyfish. And everyone getting fished up. Maybe this was the alternate storyline of the episode Gone from season 6. Yeah, where everyone was gone except Spongebob. It's right here. 
and you're like wondering, hey, where did everybody go? Maybe the alternative storylines, they got all fished up. Oh no. We have some crazy sponge out here. We have uh, some crazy plankton here. The sponge nose. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, building made out of SpongeBob. It's not really a building, it's like a walking robot. Sarsaparilla and the Dirty Mark Mug. 10 cents. This seemed particularly friendly to SpongeBob Patrick here. Soda drip. Ice cream sundae for everyone. Um, we also have SpongeBob reading comments to Patrick and Gary. And lastly, we actually have this Horus premiere issue. This is a remake of issue number one. Let me just get it out right here. I already did a review for this, so I'm not going to go through it again. But, um, yeah, this is a very cool bonus here. That, uh... Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go through everything quickly. Uh, again, pause wherever you want to see it, and uh, this video is already going to be 25 minutes long, so... But this is the very first issue of Spongebob Comics, released in February 2011. I remember I actually ordered this online, because I couldn't find a local store yet to uh, carry these, and this was the first issue after all, so I couldn't really order it. But look at this colossal pinup. Stomping good first issue. Um, yeah, they're playing my tune. So really, really cool. Brings back a lot of memories. This is February 2011. That's six years ago, so behind the scenes. Wow, cool. We have the best joke ever. And on the back, they even have the next issue, Driven to Destruction, which we also have a review of. When, when it first came out. Again, the link to that is in the link in the playlist, of which the link to the playlist is in the upcoming end screen or in the description box below. Midnight Snack Attack. And of course, some Sponge Funnies. So, overall, the SpongeBob Comics treasure chest is essentially, essentially, okay, a collection of comics that uh, are not already in. Is in books one to three. Let's just put it at that. So, honestly, I was kind of expecting more, but uh, if you guys remember, we did a video in 2013 for the SpongeBob SquarePants Experience Coffee Table book. Yes, I still remember that. I don't know whether you guys remember that. Uh, but yeah, so that one had a lot of extras in it. This one, the only extra is essentially that uh, issue one reprint. So, um, I still appreciated the cover and all that, but uh, you know, it doesn't feel like a awesome, a very awesome product. It's like, you know, putting two of the existing books, like this is like issue, like book number four and five combined together, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, but overall, if you're a SpongeBob Comics fan, still do pick up this SpongeBob Treasure Chest, especially if you're new to SpongeBob Comics and you have never seen SpongeBob Comics before, this is a good way of getting into SpongeBob Comics. After all, it gets your collection started with issue number uh, one. Okay, more hidden treasures inside is really just bonus pinups that you may want to photocopy and put it out on your wall as a poster, that kind of thing. But overall, I'll give this SpongeBob Comics treasure chest a four out of five. Comics are great because I can fault the comics. I do like the packaging, so that's a, that's a plus. I, I appreciate the comics, the, the issue number one, bonus reprint, so that was good as well. But honestly, I feel that they could have done a lot more of the treasure chest. After all, this is $30, and the coffee table book was $50. So uh, that one had way more. Uh, if you want to know what I'm talking about, you have to go and watch that series that I did in 2013. I may redo that series because back then my camera wasn't that good so if you're interested in that comment box below but yeah uh, basically they could have done so much more with this treasure chest but you know they just kind of made it a like two part or, or combine two regular books into one and added like uh, a nice packaging and the bonus reprint so of course the pinups as well 
So overall, 4 out of 5, what do you guys think? Comment in the box below. This is probably our longest video in like the entire year, I'm not so sure. But <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, favorite, comment, etc. Keep it right here on Automus Wonder 101. And in the next video, we're going to be doing something all new. So stay tuned for that. See you guys in the next video. Bye!